This is Smailham Tower. This fairy tale setting in the middle of the Scottish borders. The place where Sir Walter Scott grew up and had his love of border ballads and warfare nourished. During the reaving times, however, Smailham was not home to the Scott family. It was home to the Pringle family, or Hop Pringle family. A powerful family that existed in the central borders during that time. Pringle family branched out. This was not their only residence in the borders. family had many lands and towers in this area. Many of them in the sort of Gala Shields area. Blindley, Whitbank, Buckham Tower, Torwood Lee, which is still a residence of the Pringle family to this day. But there's one specific branch of this family that I'm interested in today and one specific man. And the man that I'm interested in today is one Mr. Robert Pringle of Wrangham. Wrangham. I don't know anything about this guy, I've only just turned up some evidence of him in some old history texts. So let's go to Wrangham and find out if there's anything surviving off the Pringle dynasty there. Some of you with any kind of knowledge of Scottish borders geography might be thinking, what is he talking about? There's no such a place as Wrangham. And you might be right on modern maps, but I've consulted the old maps, and somewhere on this hillside is the village or the lost village of Wrangham. not great news I'm afraid. It does seem like the medieval to kind of 17th century village of Wrangham has been ploughed. Disappointing. But what this investigation has done is it's opened up an entire new avenue to me because you see the lost village of Wrangham was built on the site of a vast and vastly important prehistoric temple and traces, well not just traces, stunning spectacular evidence survives.
first bit of evidence is this solitary standing stone known as the cow stone. An enormous monolith. Now some people say this was the centre of the village, but I don't think it was. I think the village was further down there a little bit. Some people say there was a marker to mark the birthplace of St Cuthbert. I don't believe that either, to be honest. But whatever it was, it marked the site of real importance. And you may be thinking, it's a monolith, a standing stone, they're all over the place. But this complex is far bigger and far more than just that. That is the outskirts in the beginning. Before Pringle gained control or ownership of these lands, they were owned by the monks of Dryborough Abbey. And you can see why these religious men wanted this site, and I'm about to show you that. As you see, it's thought that the cow stone just there was merely one, one of an enormous amount of stones which circled the central point of this complex or temple or whatever you want to call it. And the central point is on the brow of this hill and it's known as the Brother Stones. And they really are two gigantic and massively impressive, spectacular standing stones. 5,000 years old. These things were built in 3000 BC. Can you believe that? You know, I can just imagine Robert Pringle, now of Wrangham, standing here in 1451, sitting on his horse surveying this scene, surveying this beautiful and spectacular piece of land that he just acquired, building futures in his head for him and his family and his dynasty. The monolith at this side, the north is slightly smaller and you spin around this fantastic vista in every direction and then the one at the south is huge, it must be two metres tall and about a metre in diameter even though it's square and the views right across to Pringles family heritage at Smalem are nothing short of mind blown so you've got this massive radial complex of standing stones with these Absolute beauties in the middle of it. But that's not all. This was a far, far bigger, bigger concern than just a, a, a temple of standing stones. Because on the hill just over here, this one here is a prehistoric hill fort. And all the way over the side of the hills, I don't know if you can quite see them from here. There's cultivation terraces, so it was clearly a big population that needed fed in this area. So it was more, more than just a religious temple worshipping the sun or whoever they were worshipping up here.
there's a kind of modern but ancient to us I suppose legend associated with these two stones at the top of the hill here they're known as the brother stones and apparently two brothers who were born here 13th century maybe both went off in diff different directions in life they were separated at birth, they were twins one day they both met up back here one had become a Catholic and one was a Protestant they ended up fighting and both of them were killed at the brow of this hill and the two stones mark the site of their burial <laughs> believe that if you will but the stones have been reliably dated at 3000 BC so it's probably a load of old cod's wallop you know I've never really been a steeply spiritual man but even I can feel the, the energy and the power peace maybe in this site amazing thought to think that everybody who's arrived here in the Scottish borders for the last 5,000 years has wondered at the mystery of these stones just exactly the same as I'm doing today the ancient hill tribes the Romans the border reavers the Jacobites the Vikings they've all came here and they've all thought wow what the hell are those With this site now? Is it a tourist attraction? No, <laughs> the landowner owners don't even want you here. They'll do anything to keep you off the place. Should be a tourist attraction. Should be like Stonehenge. People should be here worshipping whatever it was the ancients were worshipping in years gone by. I think we should just come up here and appreciate it and enjoy it and worship the sun and the hills and the land that we were born in, or our ancestors were born in. So whether you come from Massachusetts, or Melrose, or Melbourne, or Montreal, or somewhere in South Africa that begins with M, it doesn't matter if you've got border ancestry, regardless of what the name was, the riding surname, we all originated from these ancient people that first emigrated here when the Ice Age, the last Ice Age, retreated. These these were everybody's ancestors. 